What's up folks, it's Phil Meyer. Recently I started using Botocera Linux to emulate my older games. The mini PC I picked up to run these games has enough power to use the scale effects shader which I really like. Scale effects gives older games a fresh look while keeping that retro feel. Scale effects is included with Botocera 36, but it's not already pre-configured in Botocera's shader menus. This video will show you how to create your own shader profile in Botocera and apply it to your games. All right, there are three main points I wanna cover in this video. I'm gonna try and do it in as non-boring a way as I can. The first is how to add a custom libretro shader profile to Botocera using already existing shaders included with the system. After that, we'll go a little further and I will show how you can tweak that custom profile to use slightly different shaders per game system. And for the third core point, I'll show you how you can use an externally downloaded shader set in your custom profile. With any video guide, they can go out of date as time moves on, so please be sure to check the video description for any updates. Botocera comes with a bunch of different emulators, letting you get really granular in picking a specific emulator for an individual game if you need to. Any of the emulators that are built using LibRetro will let you pick shaders from a menu while playing the game. However, if you quit the game and come back in, the shader choices don't preserve. Even if you saved game or core settings, these shader choices are reset. This is because with Botocera, the intended method for picking shaders is from its front end menu. While browsing individual game systems, if you press the equivalent of select on your controller, you'll bring up options for that game system. Here, if you browse under advanced options, you can pick a specific shader set to use for that game system. If you want to get more granular, you can assign a shader set for a specific game as well. Highlight the game that you want to set the shader for and hold down whatever button you use to normally launch the game. This will bring up an options menu for that specific game and you can assign it a shader set here as well. Any setting that's left at auto will end up choosing the setting from the next level up. So as an example, if a game's shader is left at auto, it means it will be selected from the game system settings instead. And if the game system settings are set to auto, it means it's going to pick from the default set by Botocera for that system. So that's how you can select a shader that you want to use for a system or a game. Now let's talk about getting our custom shader, in this case I want to use scale effects, into that menu so we can select it. Alright, we'll need to set up some files on the system. For this video I'm going to do it right here and connect a keyboard. If you want to, you can remote to your Botocera machine, whatever method works best for you. From Botocera's main game systems menu, press F1 on the keyboard to drop down to the file manager. From here, we want to browse under Applications, and I'm going to launch Xterm. From here, let's take a look at Botocera's built-in shader configs first. Botocera's shader configs are located under the user share Botocera path. Within the shaders folder, we can see there's a specific folder for scale effects. And within the scale effects folder, there are a few different variations of the scale effects shader. You may also note the two different file extensions for the shaders. One of them is used for the OpenGL renderer, while the other one is used for the Vulkan renderer. Going back up a level, within the shaders folder there's a configs folder. This is where Botocera's built-in shader profiles are defined. If we take a look within one of these configuration items, there's a file called rendering defaults. This is how the individual shaders are specified for this specific shader profile. For custom shaders, we just need to set up some folders and files in a similar way, but we're going to do this under the user data path, which is where you, the user of Botocera, are meant to store your stuff, like ROMs, your saves, and in this case, custom shaders. So we can navigate to the user data folder. Within that, we'll create a folder called shaders. Within that, we'll create a folder called configs. And then the last folder we'll make inside is the name of the profile we want to use in our menu. In this case, I'll call it my custom shader. Getting inside our new custom shaders folder, we need to create the rendering defaults file and I'm gonna use the nano editor to do that. Inside the file, you can write some comments if you want to, but an important bit is to start a line that defines the default shader profile with default colon. Under default, we'll specify the shader to use and the shader to use here is first the folder that the shader is located under. So remember how we looked at the scale effects folder at the start, and then whatever shader inside that folder we want to use. 
Now, remember how the shaders had two different file extensions? You don't include the file extension here, and the reason for that is that it will be auto-selected depending on what renderer you're using. The next line is scan line, true or false. And in this case, I'm just gonna leave it at false. From the docs I've read, scan line only applies to one specific emulator, so you'll likely just wanna leave this at false. And that's all it takes to create a basic shader profile. I'm gonna exit the terminal session, and when I get back to the file manager, I'll quit out of that as well, and we'll end up at Botocera's main menu. Now, if I go and change the shader for a game system or a game, my custom shader will appear in the menu and I can choose it. After launching the game, it's pretty clear the shader has been applied, but we can also browse the shaders menu in game and confirm we're using what we think we are, which is scale effects. So this is enough to provide my custom shader to Botocera and it can be applied blanket across a game system or to a specific game. But what if I wanted a specific game system to use a slightly different variation of the scale effects shader. So I'm gonna get back to an Xterm session and looking back under the scale effects folder, you can see there's one here called scale effects hybrid. So let's say we wanted to apply this to the Nintendo Entertainment System. I'm gonna go back and edit my rendering defaults file that I set up and I'll add a new section for NES. Here I can add an entry just for the NES and set it up to use scale effects hybrid. Now as a reminder, I knew that NES was the section for the Nintendo Entertainment System just by referencing any of the existing configs that come with Botocera. All right, now getting back to the Botocera front end menus, I'm gonna go make sure that my custom shader is selected for one of my NES games and I'll launch it. So opening up the in-game menu, I can browse to shaders and I can see that the scale effects hybrid is chosen for this game and that's correct. So this is how you can set up a single shader profile, but adjust it differently per game system if you want to. So the last thing we'll cover is if you find a custom shader that's not included with Botocera and you want to include it in a profile. All right, so back in an Xterm session, I have a folder called My Downloaded Shader. So inside that folder are some shaders that let's say I've downloaded onto my system. So what I'll do is move that downloaded shaders folder underneath my already existing shaders folder. And you should see here that it should be a sibling of the configs folder. Now I'll just need to re-edit that rendering defaults file I set up for my shader profile. And instead of scale effects, I'll point it to use my downloaded shader. Now remember the shader file paths are either referencing Botocera's built-in shaders or the ones that you define within your user data shaders folder. And that should be what it takes to use a downloaded shader within your custom profile. We can launch the NES game again and we can confirm that the chosen shader set is something different than scale effects. All right, everyone, thanks for watching and I hope this was just the right amount of information. If this video helped you or you found it useful, I'd really appreciate you letting me know by hitting that like button or leaving a comment. If you'd like to see some more examples of scale effects in action, there's a video linked here in the end card that you can watch. Take care, everybody.